And now we arrive at the gospel. And the gospel for this cycle B comes from the gospel of Mark, the very last words almost of the, of, in fact, actually it is, the last words. Now, this is a tough gospel. I love it. I taught it lots. But when you get to 68, the, the angel tells the women, go to Galilee, you'll see him there. And they ran away. They're supposed to go tell the, the disciples. And they said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. And the last two words of Mark's gospel are, Ephobumpgar. They were afraid indeed, or however. That's a funny ending. Now, there have been theories about that ending since people started commenting on the gospel. Maybe the scribe on his way to the printer, there wasn't a printer, you remember? He'd go to some place, a fellow would re read out, and about 20 fellows would copy it. So then he had 20 copies of, of the document, you see. Maybe the fellow on the way to the printer's office, if you will, dropped a page. I doubt it. So then we have another hand finishing the gospel, more than one hand, inspired. This is part of the gospel, it's part of the canonical text. It's inspired by the Holy Spirit, but it's different. And that's what we have now, uh, because it mentions uh, the ascension. But it also, you see, do you see how much Jesus cares about everybody? He guess this, why did he gather these 12 together and then send them out? Tell the world how much we love them, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Tell them. Give them a glimpse of the possibilities opened up because I died and rose. Write out all my words in the power of the Holy Spirit. Get them out so people can hear what I taught, can read about the way I, I healed, can come to me for healing. Get out there. Preach the gospel. In the new liturgy, we have that one of those same sayings. I don't have it quite right. Go forth and proclaim the good news or whatever. It's the whole point. So this is sort of the proclamation. Part of that mysterious ending of Mark. Uh, so the text, see, starts uh, where we are. Uh, and he said to them, going forth into the whole world, preach the gospel to every creature. And it says creature. Are we supposed to preach to the wolves and bears? And Well, St. Francis did. Uh, but if we got transformed, they'll profit because we'll be nice to them. Uh, so let's just keep it because it's, we got a lot of work to do anyway. Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Now, you know what would be very helpful? If you uh, picked up the gospel or one of those mass preparation book, uh, booklets for this Feast of the Ascension, and just read that line over and over and over again till you heard our Lord say that to you. Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Everybody knows, you know, when cousin Luke finds the Lord, you can't shut him up. Oh, I wanted to, you know, and you go, oh, come on, Luke, come on, Luke. you want to eat supper. Yeah. <laughs> That's very beautiful, though. He's got a treasure and he wants to share it. That's what the Lord is saying here. You know, doesn't say go into every classroom. Doesn't even say go into every pulpit. Says to go into the whole world and proclaim the Evangelion. The Evangelion is the good news. What is the good news anyway? You know, Paul says right there in Romans 18, I think. I'm not ashamed of the Evangelion. It is the power of God unto salvation for every believer and so forth. How is the Evangelion? Well, let me give you an example. Suppose you were rooting for, well, what about the last Super Bowl? You were rooting for New York let's say. But you were busy, you didn't get a chance to watch it. The next morning somebody says, New York won! That's good news! If they won! 
The words aren't the good news. It's what's brought to you by the words, the reality of the victory. So when you say God became man, embraced us, healed us, taught us, died in an act of love, rose in an act of beauty and power to bring us all to heaven, ooh, that's quite a nice idea. But it's only good news because it's true. So preach the good news means tell people the truth and let the Lord help you, as you're going to hear, so that it's impressed on them as truth. You see, way back in the hippie days, the young people used to have this phrase, you know, man, I can't hear what you're saying because who you are is talking too loud. It's a very good phrase. We have to love Jesus enough to want everybody to love him. Is that hard? No. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. It's what all these texts have been telling us. You see, live in the heavenlies. Okay. Then the text goes on. You see, uh, the one who believes and is baptized will be saved. And you say, well now, what's this technicality about baptism? I mean, like, if they believe, you know, uh, he does say if they don't believe, you know, uh, they're condemned. Believe is the first step. Baptism is what? It's the Lord Christ taking hold of you and bringing you into his body so that from now on you are joined to the living, eternal, beautiful, and still on earth church body of Christ. That's why it's so important. It's the means by which, and that's why, you see, baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Or, as Paul says in Corinthians 1 Cor 12, don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? Have I got that mixed up with Galatians? Uh, no, I think it's 12, 1. Uh, but then there's the other talk, you know, as many, yeah, this is it's going to be um, Corinthians, but then in Galatians, as many, as have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. Alleluia. This is the mystery. And so he's saying to them, you know, go out and tell them about me, but then bring my power there. And you say, Jesus, I mean, just words and water, it's going to do it? He said, yes. Yes. I've made it that way. This is the way. Okay. Then... If you do this, I'll make it credible. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They'll speak in new tongues. They'll pick up serpents with their hands. If they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they will recover. Now, right now, we are in the process of working hard. In fact, we have a whole synod uh, being formed on the new evangelization. Why? Because the world, just look at it. Doesn't your heart move with pity? Don't you understand what happened to me when I wrote that poem? Liv? Who's going to tell them? You are. You've got to tell them. Go out to the whole world. Now, certain people have a missionary. Go to a place, you know, a novitiate, get formed, get ordained. If you're not, if you're a woman religious, you don't get ordained, you get ready. Then you go and you tell the world about God. But the heart of the New Testament, as uh, of the new evangelization, as uh, Pope Benedict says often and often, is the laity. The laity have to preach the good news. That's the heart of it. Well, nemo dot quod non got. You know, if you don't have it, you can't give it away. Now, how do you get it? Believe it. Preach it to yourself. Pray. Obey. Keep sin out of your life. And you will be so thrilled about the presence of Christ in you that you'll find ways to impart it to people all the time. I may have already mentioned my holy Aunt Mary. You know, even when I was a priest, uh, and I'd be walking around, when I was a young priest, I was embarrassed by I shouldn't have ever. She would talk about God to anybody, anytime, anyplace. 
I remember once, I don't know if I told you this story before, but it's, we were standing on a street corner. Did I tell you about that? And um, she's talking to this guy. And, uh, oh, didn't the Lord give us a beautiful day? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, just this woman out of nowhere. Then, just before the light changes, she says to my my nephew is on the other side of you. He's a priest. I had a call around. He said, he'll bless you if you want. What am I going to do? So I blessed him. That's zeal. And you know, the older I get, I say to myself, the more I'm getting like my Aunt Mary. I'm talk anytime, any place. Tell people about the Lord in love. You know, it's not a salesman's pitch. I'm making, I'm not making a commission on this. They have to know. And so, and now in this new evangelization that we've already begun, how many people, lay people, and many, many young priests particularly, have an enormous healing ministry. Every place they go, they pray, and hundreds are healed. New evangelization. But here's the secret. You can't give what you don't have. You can't evangelize unless you've been evangelized. Unless you've let the Holy Spirit evangelize you. So this is a living, beautiful, burning, loving reality in your heart. And you want everybody to know about it. So then, you try to get smart. You just talk about, you know, shaking your rosary and, you know. No, you find a way. You know, my aunt. Didn't God give us a nice day, you know? Or other ways. Standing in the grocery line, you want to start up a conversation. So you say, if these prices keep up, we're going to have to bring the bank here to pay for our grocery bills. And the other one's going to say, oh, you're right. And then you got to, then talk a little bit. Pray. How far can you go? Maybe not very far. But suppose the Lord has destined of giving this, that this person is going to need 170 hits to get to know the Lord. And you're number 116. All you have to do is love, smile, say a word about the Lord. Even just God bless you if you finish your conversation. That may be all you have to do. But when the last person makes the 170th hit, then they'll come. That's why we have to be alert. It doesn't have to be that every day, you know, we bring a hundred people in our train. Every day we share the Lord. That's all. So then, the Lord Jesus, after he spoke to them, was taken up into heaven and took his seat at the right hand of God. That's why the gospel is used here, because it's the another place where the ascension is mentioned. What happens at the ascension? A more intense presence of the Lord in the world and in heaven. But it's only possible that he's plunged into the very depth of the Father, and now he can be present throughout the whole world. And he is present. He's doing things that we never know about to people. I remember a young Jewish man telling me, he lived in Jerusalem, so did I at the time, and he said, uh, I guess he was a Christian. He became one. He said, my dad was dying. And I was the only one in the room. And I said, I put my hand on his head. I said, Jesus, if you're real, heal my father. Father was healed right there. So he became a Christian. The Lord's still doing that, you see. They went forth and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word through accompanying signs. That's the new evangelization. You need the signs, the healing, the prophecy, the kindness, and the permanent sign, setting up things where people can come and get help. But you need these beautiful signs, okay? Um, and then there's another part of the, from, from another, another hand, it talks about, they went and told Peter, all these, Peter and his companions, these other people did. Afterwards, Jesus himself, through them, sent forth from east to west the sacred and imperishable proclamation of eternal salvation. Isn't that beautiful? The sacred and imperishable proclamation of eternal salvation. 
If you talk to somebody and they start to come toward the Lord, they are on the way to an eternal salvation. 